What's going on guys? Derek Craig here with oilfieldbasics.com. Today I wanted to share with you guys some thoughts about artificial lift and horizontal wells. So we keep on getting topic suggestions from you guys and we're busy wanting to do sponsored videos with companies and try to give, get you really cool content about specific tools and processes and technologies that are already in the industry on top of everything that Sebastian and I want to cover in our own videos. So it's hard to keep getting dressed up and in our fancy oil food basics custom polos <laughs> and filming videos and scripting them and then professionally recording them and just trying to crank out all this content. So we're going to try something different today. We're just going to try discussing a con uh, discussing this topic here in a study room here. And <laughs> it won't be as professional, but we'll still be bringing you guys content and it saves us a ton of time and we can crank out more of them. So hopefully it kind of washes out. Hope you guys like these. But anyways, um, so again, today's topic just artificial lift and horizontal well. So this is something that came up in class and just wanted to continue on the discussion here and make sure that our viewers were clear on this topic. So artificial lift is used indeed in horizontal wells. So this is, came, again, came up in class today, but the purpose of artificial lift, in case you're not so familiar with the production side of the industry, artificial lift is things like pump jacks and stuff that you see going along the road. See those monstrous Texas style pump jacks, or if you're in Appalachia, a lot of small pump jacks like everywhere. <laughs> Um, those are the more noticeable forms of artificial lift uh, from the road anyways, but basically the purpose is to reduce the hydrostatic pressure on a formation. So I guess in this image here, the horizontal portion, let's say that's through your reservoir, um, but let's say your reservoir keeps producing fluid and keeps producing fluid and, and eventually that keeps building up. If it's not coming to surface, if your well isn't flowing at a rate high enough to bring that fluid to surface, it's going to keep on building up. So that fluid level is gonna build up and up and up and up and up in that well, and it's gonna apply back pressure onto your reservoir and your formation, and it's not gonna to wanna to produce near as well. So the point of artificial lift is to help lift that fluid out of the out of the well into surface. So artificially lifting that fluid. We're basically giving the well assistance, okay? So that indeed has applications in horizontal wells. So we see it a lot in vertical wells. It's been around for a good while now. I mean, this is it, wells need help after they've begun producing for a little while. They're going to lose the reservoir pressure. It's going to start declining, and their production rate's going to go down again because of that. So, artificial lift is there to help out. And there's lots of different types. And the horizontal wells, in particular, pose a lot of challenges to implementing artificial lift in horizontal wells because of things such as deviations. So. All of uh, when you're drilling this vertical section to try to get down to your formation, you're starting to do the step out and build that curve. All of that is it's deviation, right? It's deviation from literally straight down. So when you're talking about something that has any type of moving parts, which a lot of artificial lift systems do, then you're talking about rod wear. You're talking about you're talking about wear on the system, and also, again, once you're out in the lateral, I mean, on horizontal wells, this lateral is not always going to be flat. We try to follow the formation and. Um, sometimes our information's behind the bit and it, it takes a while for us to steer and do corrections and everything and you might have a little fall and drift to a certain direction or a ton of things can happen to make that lateral kind of bumpy per se. So that can lead to slugging and all these other things and also horizontal wells typically have a higher pressure starting out. You're in shales and deeper shales typically uh, where we're drilling horizontal wells now so they're going to be higher pressure and again this just adds to the complications of trying to put an artificial lift in these in these well but indeed we do it and because these wells these shell wells these, that are horizontally drilled and hydraulically fractured have a ton of production capability and it's up to us as engineers to try and engineer the best type of system for the rates that we want to get out of the well and also for the well conditions themselves so just wanted to talk through a couple of these different options and, and go over a few things. Gas lift is definitely one of the most common artificial lift systems that we're seeing being used in horizontal wells across the shale place. So especially in the Permian Basin and places in Texas and where you have such high rate oil wells. So that's Permian in a nutshell basically. So that's what we're that's what they care about in the Permian. They get gas too, but the oil is what they're after and they got a lot of it. So gas lift is a very good resource because you don't need like electricity necessarily to run the compressors. You can use your own field gas um, if there's enough of it and oftentimes there is, they can't even pay to get it out of the basin right now basically. Or they're not, they have such, such a large amount of gas they're even flaring it in a sticky situation for some companies. But basically, um, this is, it's a good option for high rate wells and basically what that is is literally, so you have tubing in a well, so that's that blue thing on the board there. You're actually injecting, so on gas lift you would have a packer kind of installed here to isolate this annulus in your production casing because the production casing is where you have your perforations and that's where the inflow of your res of oil and gas is coming into your well. But basically, in your tubing here, you have a packer around it so it would seal that off. 
and you would inject gas into different valves along the string, along your production or your tubing string, and it would help to lift the fluid out. So you're basically providing more gas to blow or lift the fluid out of the well. So you're basically helping the reservoir do something that's natural anyways. It just doesn't have as much pressure to it because again, you, you're kind of loaded up with fluid. So, But this is a good solution for a lot of different plays and a lot of different horizontal wells that have a high um, high liquid content, especially oil, because then it would be more economical. Um, this is somewhat of an expensive system because you have the compressors and those can also be kind of finicky and everything like that. But this is a, gas lift is a pretty good system. And if you're interested in gas lift or even artificial lift in general, definitely check out our courses online at wolfwoodbasics.com. Um, we're working with Floco um, actually to just, um, we're working on getting it approved and everything now, but it should be up very shortly. It's a, a one-on-one course on gas lift. So check that out. We're also, we're also doing one with on plungers with them and that should be up shortly too. So be on the lookout for that. And also our courses, um, just Wolfwood Basics courses, have the background and everything on artificial lift as well. So it can help clarify up some of these topics. But another another method that of artificial lift that is being used in these horizontal wells is what we call ESPs. So basically, elect, electric submersible, semi-submersible pumps or submersible pumps, basically it's just an electric pump that you're literally lowering down in your tubing string or on your tubing, whatever. And it, it basically pumps it to the surface, but you need electricity to do that. And a lot of these remote areas, it's expensive to get electric there and also ESPs are kind of finicky in the sense of you can only run them for so long like they're they're kind of designed for a very particular volume so once that design changes you know once your well starts declining you might have to pull it and run a, another system in with a, a different number of stages or whatever on that ESP so that's one thing that's nice about gas lift too I didn't mention is that with gas lift you can actually adjust your rates that you're injecting of gas to help lift the fluid out. So it's very easy to adjust those rates as your well declines. And another method is, of course, pump jacks. So pump jacks are incredibly common across the US, especially on vertical wells. Um, pe people know the technology, the science behind it and how it works. They can get pretty good at optimizing it. But the biggest thing with, um, with rod lift and pump jacks on horizontal wells is the deviations, like I talked about earlier. So because you know this vertical section might be kind of deviated, especially when you get down in towards here, then that's going to be with um, rod lift. You have rods literally screwed together, going all the way down inside your tubing to a pump that sits down at the bottom, and them rods go up and down and stroke the pump. Then the fluid travels up inside the tubing to the surface. But these rods will, when your well's deviated, they'll be running into the sides of your tubing and they'll be rubbing along alongside the edge of the tubing and that's gonna add a bunch of wear. And that's, you know, run, a lot of them are run like 24 seven or a lot of time, depending on how much you're trying to get out of that well. So it's a lot of wear and eventually, and that leads to expensive workovers where you have to have to, have to pull out those rods and replace them or the tubing might get a hole in it, whatever be the case. So that's a kind of ex expensive system, but it's also very common, uh, but you can't get as much rate out of it as you can like a gas lift or an ESP just because of your limitations with the pump and, the te and the, just the science behind how that actually works. The other option is going to be plunger. So, and again, Floco just did a course on this. So if you wanna know more about plungers and how they work, check that out. But plungers can be used at a variety of different rates. They're, the science and the technologies on plungers are increasing and it's really cool stuff. They have plungers that will fall against flow now. They've got so many different types of plungers you can use in it, a bunch of different types of wells producing at different rates, but you definitely are gonna see a lot of plungers in gas wells. So in Appalachia and maybe Haynesville, you know, areas that produce, that are more of gas plays, you're gonna see those being used more often because they're incredibly cheap. I mean, like 10% like of the cost of some of these other systems to install it and operate it. It's incredibly cheap. It's very natural for the well to do. So basically run, just runs on pressure differences and the well will shut in for a little while, build up fluid and everything, and then open it. And then the way that the plunger seals in the tubing, it allows the pressure of the formation to naturally lift it up towards surface way easier and thus removing your fluid. But again, check the plunger lift course out for more information on that and everything. But this is kind of the basics of it. And you can also run plunger lift with gas lift. So a pago or a gapel gas is a plunger lift or plunger is a ga gas lift, however your company <laughs> chooses to view that. Um, but basically, you know, these are all different 
options that you have for horizontal wells and artificial lift and some of the challenges that you see in those as well. And again, another thing I just wanna mention, kind of close off the video with, and sorry it's getting to be long, there's just so much to talk about uh, um, with these topics. And this is just one topic. Um, I'm even restraining myself. Um, but anyways, another thing too, it, to note is whenever you're putting these artificial lift systems in horizontal well, no matter what type you choose, they're all going to be run uh, basically to the curve of the well. So before the heel, 30, 60-ish degrees inclination, you're not gonna run it all the way out in the lateral because the purpose of an artificial lift system is to remove the hydrostatic head or the back pressure on the well, and that's caused by the, the height or the weight of the fluid. So there's no reason to run it all the way out in here, and you'd also get a ton of wear, and it'd be a lot more challenging for literally every single system that we talked about. Um, another thing I wanna to note too is that I didn't change the drawing for all these. I didn't draw the injection valves and everything on the gas lift and everything. I just I was just talking about it. Just, just uh, basically, you know, the basics of it. I didn't draw a different design for all of these different things. But if you want to learn more about the about the different forms, again, check out our courses. Follow us on YouTube here and see more of those videos when we post it. And if you have a particular topic that you want to learn more about, comment it below, and we'll do our best to get it on the schedule, get it recorded. Um, you might have to do some more of this kind of style to get through all the lists. So let us know what you think about doing more of this kind of style. And if it works, then we'll do it. And if not, we'll try and do more of the studio vlogs, but it, it takes a lot longer time and effort. So <laughs> let us know what you think and uh, look forward to seeing you in the next one.